Hello, welcome back to Cracking Cryptic, where today I thought we would do um, a viewer requested puzzle. You can see it on the screen there. This is uh, this looks like some sort of app on a phone. Uh, it's called an expert rated puzzle. Um, so I've no idea how hard it will be, um, but I've put it into uh, my software here, so I'm going to be able to go through it and see how we go. So let's have a look. Now, as usual, uh, sorry to be uh, a bore about this, but in three by three blocks, if I can locate uh, two cells exactly that a number can go into, then I make little pencil marks like this. These nines here are the only because of this nine and this nine is the only two cells that a nine can go into. Um, so if I spot things like that, then I will pencil mark it. Um, it tends to, I think, be the most efficient way of. Um, developing the logic of a puzzle. Um, and you can see all I'm going to go do, I can see I can put a 5 in at the bottom here, 5's over here, 6's um, there, look. This is all very cluttered, isn't it? In fact, if we look across here, we've got a 4 and an 8, and I don't have a 4 and an 8 in this 3x3 three three block yet, so I can immediately pencil the 4's and the 8's into those two cells. Make sure I use my pencil marks. So again, as I can see that this eight here is very useful on this top three by three block um, because of this eight. This eight rules out an eight from this cell. The pencil marked eights rule out the eights from the central three cells of this block. So I'm left with a lovely five eight pair there. Um, which we'll come back to. I just want to make sure that I add the 6 and the 9 here because you can see this 9 is going to allow me to place a big number. Um, and in fact I'm getting another nice pair now from this 6 into these two squares. So there's a lot going on here, a lot of nice, uh, nice pairs we're finding early on. This 3 means I can pencil mark threes into those two positions. Actually that is useful because look now, uh, that means I can pencil mark threes up here and now because I've managed to get pencil marks with the same number in them into two cells in this three by three block, this cell here can no longer take this six. Um, you can see that easily just to demonstrate it. If I put a six here I now have to put both a three and a five into this single cell. That's not going to work. Um, so I can remove this 6. This will have to be a 6. Um, hmm. And that means that I can pencil mark 1s and 2s along here, which means this cell here has to be a 2. 7 now is forced in this 3x3 three three block. There's only one place a 7 can go, and that's there. Um, and I still need to place a 1 and a 6 so that I can pencil mark the ones and the sixes and I can pencil mark sevens up here look so effectively we've got a one six seven triple along the top row because this five and three double is um, ruling out three and five obviously from these two squares and now this five here that unwinds this five eight pair so let's do that five and eight into those two squares uh, it's this two, seven, and eight down here. Now I wouldn't ordinarily pencil mark this because obviously I'm slightly um, misusing my logic there because these can all go into three positions. But it just helps me to focus on what's left in in the remaining five open squares. Um, for example, I can quickly say or see that I can place pencil mark threes. Um, Nines are down here, but I can't see how to use that. Ah, ones. This one, this this five six pair locks a one into the, one of these two squares in the bottom row, and obviously a one can't go here because of this one. So we can place a one here and into these two squares here. These two have to be eight and nine in some order. I'm just mm. going to work a little bit harder on this, this row here because this 5-6 pair means that I've got effectively five numbers now in row 7. So the numbers I'm missing are 1, 4, 8 and 9. Aha! So this square, we have a 4, 
an 8 and a 9. So this square can only be a 1. Um, that's a naked single, but as Mark described yesterday, sometimes they're not the easiest things to spot. And that allows me to unwind the 1 and the 2 up there, look. Pencil mark 1's in the central 3x3 three three block. And now down here, the open squares can contain the numbers 3 and 7. Again, I'm just going to slightly misuse my logic here just to highlight that I know those three numbers. So I need to place one, three, and six in column two. Ah, we've got a one and a six here. So this square, again, that's another naked single. That's got to be a three. Which means I can eliminate this three here. Um, and this has to be a 1 or a 6, but I don't see how to immediately make use of that. 7's into one of these two positions. And this 4 here means that this square here is the only place a 4 can go over on the right hand side at the bottom here. That means this has to be a 4 and this has to be an 8. That allows me to pencil mark. In fact, this must be 8 and 9, these two squares. It's the only things that can go now in row 7. So over here we need to place, uh, what's it, 2, 3 and 7 that we're missing. So we can place 2's into those two squares. Don't know anything about 3's yet. Um, 7, and this must be 3, 7, 9 over here. So there's a 9 in one of those two squares. And we can't see anything else. And then the thing I'm tempted to do now, I'm not seeing anything, I'm not seeing anything terribly clever, but I have noticed that if we look over on the right hand side of the grid, there is an awful lot of information already contained on the left hand side of the grid. So uh, for example, this 3-5 pair here is really restricting these squares. You know, we have six numbers already in row. Uh, three here, so they, these two squares are very restricted. Um, this obviously can only be a five or a six. This can only be what would it's going to? This can only be a three or a seven. So I'm I'm going to have a look. I think at column nine first, and then I'm going to look at column eight and just see what's going on in terms of these squares down down the right hand side. So here you can see we need to place one, six, and seven in row one. So this is a six or a seven. Um, I need to place one, three, or six here, so that's a three or a six. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? I was hoping I might be able to make a triple with this five, six here. And here we have three or seven. Aha! There you go. There is a triple. Um, I'm not terribly surprised because there's just there's so much stacked over on the left hand side that these squares down the right are seriously restricted. But it's very hard using this pencil mark method unless you fully notate the options to spot this triple because because it's not occurring in a single box of the grid we're not getting enough information to be able to see it directly we actually have to fully pencil mark the relevant squares to see it and if if this video teaches you anything it's that you need to sometimes almost draw your eyes back and away from the detail and just look at the patterns in the grid where are the big numbers concentrated where does that mean there are going to be cells that are very, very restricted? Try and find those cells, and if you are stuck, as I was here, try and use the geometry of the grid more to make progress. Sometimes it will help you. So here we've got three, six, seven, so now this square here can't take a six anymore. So we're going to be able to place a five here. Um, let's make sure we use our pencil marks. So this is a five here. And now we can place a six as well. Um, now obviously the six, we know there's a three, six, seven triple. And we know that the six of that triple is not in this square. So the six is definitely in one of these two positions up here. So combine that with this six, there must be a six in one of these two positions and there's a six here. So Let's put that 6 in. Uh, that means this must be a 6. Ah, that's useful. Look at that. 1, 6 over there. 
three, seven, six to unwind the triple now. Now this square can only be a seven, it's the only option left. And this can only be a one, again, it's the only option left for that cell. So in fact, this triple looks like it might have been the key to really, um, really making progress on the puzzle. Uh, so I still need to place three and nine in column eight here and look this three here is really helpful so now I can actually unwind that in that way this nine here gives me a nine. Oh no 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 not a six a nine and an eight um, what do I need here I think it's a two and an eight which means that I'm looking for 357 down here, so that looks right, doesn't it? That looks like it's working. I'm going to fully notate it again just because it feels like this puzzle might be requiring it. And in fact, if we now look, I've now got a 37 double in row four. So I <laughs> this is lovely actually. Look at this. This 37 double allows me to eliminate this seven over here and gives me a 28 double as well. So now I'm only left with the numbers 1 and 9 to place in the open positions. These two must be a 1 and 9 pair. And look, I have a 1 here. So in fact, that must unwind in this way, which means this 9 and 8 is unwinding like that. Get rid of this and place 8 into one of those two cells. I um, can't remember what I need down here. I think 3 was the other number, wasn't it? So uh, this 3 here, yeah, that's going to help. So three, seven, two, like that. Three and five, like that. Which means this must be a two, I think. Yeah, that looks good. That unwinds the two eight on this side of the grid. We could have actually used uniqueness there to know that this wasn't a two or an eight. This has to be a seven, this square. Excited. Like Otherwise, we're going to have a, a deadly pattern of twos and eights in uh, four cells. I'll highlight them at the end. Just. In fact, it might just be worth just going back and just mentioning what I mean when I'm talking about a deadly pattern. You can see in this cell and this cell, we have a 2-8 pair. And over on the left-hand side, we have a 2-8 in this cell. So if this cell, if I remove the 7 as a possibility here, then we would have this 2-8 situation mirroring each other on both sides of the grid and this this we couldn't resolve which way around these twos and eights were meant to go the internal logic of the puzzle would not be able to tell us um, so if for example this was the two that would make this a two and this an eight and this an eight but it could equally as well be the other way around if this is an eight this will be an eight this will be a two and this will be a two and there's no way to um, disambiguate those two alternatives now we could have used that um, before uh, before I uh, even got this 2 here to say no this cell cannot be a 2 or an 8 because this puzzle presumably it's a good puzzle it will have one solution and therefore this cell must be a 7 and we could have used that as an alternative way to make progress so but we didn't need to we'd uh, we'd already um, we'd already done enough work to know that this must be a 7 uh, using different logic so that's fine now Let's just tidy up some of these options that we've got. Um, this cell here must be a 1, obviously. 1, 1, 1. Um, this must be a 9, 4 combination. Therefore, this must be 7, 3, 7, 5, 3. Not doing anything clever there, just unwinding the earlier pencil marks. And now, hopefully, we're going to be left with 5 and 8 into these two cells. So there we go. Uh, that's the expert puzzle, that's how to do it. Um, uh, so I hope this was useful and can improve your solving. If you enjoy the content on the channel, please uh, please do comment and tell us. Please leave us a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.